Hi, I'm David Herzog. I'm so excited to share with you about what God's showing me for the country of Myanmar. And hello to Apostle Sarah I over there, or if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Sarah A. And your brother and all the staff there, we love you guys, we miss you. Pastor Sarah Ego, Janon in a shoes one, no such a mare. Then you go on mare, a muro soundly, along who, Janon no such a nay, along who, Yeme Chipare, along with the Dile Yabare. We had such a great time last time we were there in Malaysia with you in Kuala Lumpur. Janoro began at the Kauka, Kuala Lumpuma, a two to what she get a chain to it, the Gabe Jesuro, Chimone, a Yeme Driare. And since then, yes, we've been praying for Burma and feeling a, a burden for your country, Burma or Myanmar as they call it. Biblically, we know how to pray for these things and that God will always give strategy. For every season in war and in peace. And and so one thing the Lord began to show me, something similar, not similar, but something happened in, we were in Italy last year. And we were in Rome. And in Rome, the apostles there told us they're putting up a big exhi ex exhibition in Rome, outdoors. For all to see, and it's called the gate of hell. Right there in Rome, they're putting up an actual gate of hell, as they call it. Gate of hell. And then they're putting a museum about artifacts from hell. And it was very demonic and evil for Rome, Italy to do this. So the apostles, they were asking, what do we do? Should we, how do we bind it? And the Lord began to show me and I think this can apply to Myanmar. So in Rome, we told them, the Lord said, don't just go in there and do warfare and bind it, but set up another altar of worship to the Lord. So there's a demonic portal they're trying to set up to hell, set up a portal to heaven. Worship, repentance, fasting, right in the same square. Go there and do that. And something will begin to shift, and they did that. That intercessors go, prophets went, they begin to pray, to worship, to fast, to repent, put the blood of Jesus. And I believe it disempowered what the enemy was trying to do. And also, the lockdowns and the restrictions that were, they were trying to pass would have been really harsh and it got lifted. And it didn't happen to the degree they thought. So in Myanmar, I would pray and ask the Lord, 
what is the route that opened this door for this coup or for this uh, invasion? Because something opened the door. It doesn't just happen. The enemy can only come in when there's a door open to him. So whether it's in the church, whether it's in the government, someone opened a door for the enemy to come in. Go to that place, that portal, and I'm sure you would know better than I would, and, and begin to pray, have the people pray. I mean, some of you are not there, you're in Malaysia or other countries. အဲ့တော့အဲ့နေရာကိုတွားပါအဲ့နေရာမှာရှိနေတဲ့ဘုရားသခင်မေးပါကိုတော့ဘေးဂိတ်တကားကရန်သူဝင်လာဖို့ရ
เออติงะเมยะนะซูขอบาดาบิเมงาง่ายะพะยาโกขอเมงาเยพะยากะปูปิโรจีเมเดคะเตยโนพะยาตะกาโรเยอะทะมาชีโดพะยาผิดเดเ
and they had a very demonic tree in the middle of the town by the water, this very big tree, and all the branches were twisted in such a strange way, it looked demonic. And I asked the apostle, how is this tree here? What is this tree about? And they told me, oh, they use the tree to channel the demonic realm. They use the tree as a point of contact, like an antenna, to get demons, to channel demons. It's like getting a, the old TVs had an antenna, and you would move it to get a, a, a station on TV. And to get a signal, that's what they do. So I said, my first thought, I was a lot younger. Oh, we should cut down this tree. You say, oh, you cut it down, they're going to kill you. The whole town will just kill you. Because to them, that tree is a source of protection, the source of prosperity, the source of food. They're worshiping this tree. And I, and I said, okay, Lord, what do I do? When I asked the Lord, the Lord told me, don't worry, don't, don't try to attack that tree. Talk about the greatest tree, which is the cross. Jesus died on the tree or the cross. And, and open up a heavenly portal in this place. You'll see what happens. So I did that. I preached on the tree, which is the cross, that this cross, this tree, would give you eternal life, protection, provision, everything that other tree you think can give you, this is the real one. Authority over the demonic powers. And so I did that instead. And it opened up another portal. Signs and wonders came. The glory fell. One fourth of the village was saved that night. I saw all these little eyeballs peeking in the windows. Witches and sorcerers were getting saved. Demons were coming out. Uh, all kinds of signs and wonders. Gold dust was falling on people. This is in the jungle, guys. And then we went back to our cabin and it was, there's no hotels there. It's just like this guy's little cabin house on the water. In the water, there's piranhas, so you don't swim in there. And we got back. And we begin to praise the Lord and worship Him and thank Him. Him and I were in the room. And the heavens opened up. And I saw an angel standing behind Him and He saw an angel behind me. And we were so in the presence of God and we started getting revelation for like the next five years of ministry for him. He got it for me. And then the glory got so thick in the room. 
ကျွန်တော်တို့အဲ့မှာစပြီးတော့ဖျားခင်ချင်းကနေယူပါယုံနေရတယ်သူရဲ့နောက်ငါးနဲ့မှာဖျားခင်ကျွန်တော်မိတ
Jesus is our lawyer, which is and the judges is his dad. เออจนรู้อ่ะยันตูเนี่ยสายเปลี่ยนไตกลายยินายงั้นเราก็อุบรีเนี่ยไตขยะล่ะไม่ฮุบบาบูเนาะแลมะมายันผิดตะลุบโ
เอ่อตัวนี้เนี่ยมาลุมยุเรปอมาพยาเปียวเกเรปรอฟิตพิวเจอร์เรปเปลี่ยนพี่รอปรอฟิตพิวบากูรอกูรอกะดิเปเกเ
You got to look from heaven's perspective. What is the real battle? The devil knows his time is very short, very, very short. And so he's trying to hinder, delay, stop, so Myanmar can't be saved. So your job as intercessors is you go in the way, you present your evidence, you talk to the judge, and, and you start to pray and intercede for the lost to come to salvation. ပြောင်းလဲဖို့ရတဲ့အချိန်ကအရန်ကိုနည်းနေပြီးပြောင်းလဲဖို့ရတဲ့အချိန်နည်းနေပြီးရေရှုကြွလာဖို့ရတဲ
They couldn't announce where they're going to meet because the government wouldn't know. Any lobe, Russia, Malebe, the Chinga communists, a young Uchi Sore, a Chima. The only deal, no pay Chima, two yamles were a Chinya Lumia, Chinya Lushin Zoya La Pana. And they would show up and arrest everybody. So the last meeting they had, they said, from now on, we're going to meet on this day, but we can't tell you where we're going to meet. You pray, you ask the Lord, and let the Lord guide you to where the next meeting is. So, that, so they didn't even know where they're going to meet, so there's no way the officials could know. And they would all seek the Lord, pray, fast, and guess what happened? They would get dreams or directions and get exact house number or know wh whose house to go to. And when they would knock on the door, hey, you made it! Almost like a treasure hunt. ไอ้มาตรุตรุโกไรนามาบะมาตรุยมะเลซอมะติอูเปียเดตรุยซูยะเลยมะติดอเนาะตรุอาลุมซูดาวเนเพยากะตรุไอ้แม่มาลาเป
and so we're fine. I didn't know me. Hey, me no tin or simply last year, the lock cacate calamaza. To a bearing a row winning on a piwa bido, prophet pity at ten or pinnate at a jar, simply re, here can a row lampiare, be matuyame, be mamatuayabu, be gulaba, here a lampiare, that's not a row simply. But it's the dead churches or the ones not in tune with the Holy Spirit that are open targets for the enemy, even though they're Christian by name and maybe they're born again. But they can't, they're not hearing the Lord or they don't believe the Holy Spirit's for today. So you know what could happen? A lot of those churches, denominational churches in Myanmar that are not filled with the Holy Spirit. ဖျားသခင်ကအလုပ်လုပ်တဲ့အခါမှာဝိညာဏ်နေပြီးဝတဲ့အသင်းတော်တွေကကွေကာပေးခြင်းခံရတယ်ဝိညာဏ်နေမ
Another example was Colombia. Colombia used to be known in the 80s when I was younger as the drug place. It was, it was the place. If you heard Colombia, that was the country full of drugs. Drug cartels, gangs, now it's in Mexico a lot. But in those days, and the pastors and apostles began to fast and pray together. They repented of their sins of division. These are some of the sins of repent of strife. Competition with others, corruption with finances, different things, moral sins, and the pastors and the, and the apostles got together, and prayed, began to fast and pray for their country. And when they did that, when there was a certain Unity in Colombia from the leaders, the apostles and the, the, the leaders, the pastors, it caused a great power to come upon them. And suddenly, the highest cartels and the drug lords are being caught by the police, by the military, put in jail, they pass new laws, and, and, it's, and it's, it got so much more cleaned up to now, tourists go to Colombia all the time. Americans live there and move there. It's, it's very safe now compared to before, but a lot of those demonic spirits of control, trade, it left Colombia, went down to Mexico. Now we got to pray for Mexico to get free where the drug cartels are now. It wasn't so much then. And Colombia had a national revival. One of the pastors was killed during that time by the cartels. But it led to a, a huge harvest, a revival in the nation of Colombia. So when the enemy overplays his hand, I believe that you have a right now to claim revival. The devil always goes beyond what he's supposed to do. He always goes beyond. God says, I'll let you do this much, he does this much. So when the devil does too much and overplays his hand, then there's a right to ask the Lord now for justice. And the devil to pay back seven times what he took. Illegally, that God did not allow. And I believe in Malaysia, there's definitely some injustice going on in the nation. People are being persecuted for just, for just protesting. The church is being persecuted. So we can ask now for a sevenfold recompense of what the enemy is doing in uh, Burma. And so sometimes I say Malaysia, but I mean Burma, Myanmar. So if I've said that, forgive me. I know a lot of you are in Malaysia where we preached, but you're Burmese, which is Myanmar, and, and that's what's happening there. So I'm going to be praying now in just a moment here for the, some of the things that I, that I brought to you. 
and asking God to cause a shift in the nation. And cause the nation to be saved. Can a nation be saved in a day? The Bible says yes. And I believe Myanmar can be saved in one day spiritually first and then physically. There's a shaking, but now awakening is coming. The, the persecuted church usually has the most growth of souls saved. In Iran, Iran is very persecuted. And there's, the, they say the fastest growing Muslim nation in the world of souls saved is in Iran. How? A lot of them have TV, satellite dishes, and they're watching the gospel in their language by Iranians living in the West, beaming it in. Amazing, amazing things are happening in these nations. So, say, Lord, thank you that our nation is a candidate for a massive harvest of souls like never before. And for every martyr lost, though, we claim thousands more people saved. In the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray now for the nation of Myanmar. I'm going to pray that God does something amazing that has never happened before. So Lord, let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come before you. Judge of heaven and earth. You are the judge over nations, not just people. And we bring this case to you about Myanmar, the, the persecution, the uprising, the military takeover, the loss of freedoms, the economic situation. Lord, I ask you right now to intervene and we ask together corporately with the intercessors here watching for the nation of Myanmar. We plead the blood of Jesus. We repent of any sins in the church that, have, that could have opened the door or, or, or apathy or something that hindered. We repent for the leaders of, of the nation of Myanmar. Of any sins that have opened the door to the enemy or selling out their nation to another nation, giving another nation control or, or using our nation. As a proxy war for another nation, anything like this, whether governmentally or in the church, we repent in advance even for unknown things we don't know about. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We repent of our own sins, wash our mind, hearts, spirits, our eye gates, our ear gates, anything that's not right, Lord, show us and, re and we repent and wash us with your blood. In the name of Jesus.
We come before you, judge of heaven and earth, with Jesus, who is our advocate, our lawyer. And we make a plea before you to save Myanmar both physically and spiritually. And Lord, we bring evidence before the courtroom. Why Myanmar should be saved. You said in your word that this gospel of the kingdom should go into all the earth. And then salvation shall come. Before the end comes, this gospel shall go into the, all the earth. And and so the gospel must go to Myanmar. But Lord, you've given prophetic words that Myanmar will be a nation of harvest. Of revival, of souls being saved. And Lord, it has not yet accomplished the fullness of that prophetic word. So we bring this evidence before you that Myanmar shall be saved. And that Myanmar would be a place of protection, of refuge, of prosperity, and would even spread it to other nations. We ask you, Lord, to stop the mouth of the accuser of the brethren. We, we plead the blood of Jesus as our response covers us. From sin, and let the enemy have nothing on the church in Myanmar and on the nation. And I ask you, Father God, to save the persecutors, even those in power that make the decisions, let them be struck by the Lord like Paul was. Let them be struck by the power and the glory of God. And like Paul was even blinded for several days and, and the Lord visited him and he gave his life to Jesus. I pray that high-level people in high-level positions would have sudden radical conversions to Jesus. And you would use dreams and visions and even direct visitation to those people, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would prepare and show believers where are the homes and areas of protection and refuge, Goshens. Where if they could just get there, they'll be protected, they'll be taken care of. There are people I see in the Spirit. Remnants of people all over Myanmar that their secret hiding places of favor, they're growing food, they're near water, the enemy doesn't know where they're at. I pray you would open up these hiding places and these places of refuge for God's people, especially for God's people that are being persecuted or hunted down. I thank you for Goshen's and places of safety, like Elijah. A lot of it's going to be out of the cities into some of the country areas. God's going to lead and guide people, dreams and visions, or, or through word of mouth. And I see, as we pray, Lord, I ask you that you bring the gospel back into Myanmar through the media, 
through through radio, through whatever ways. <laughs> Through even games, you know, these little Game Boys, sometimes you can bring the things in, videos. I ask you, Father, the gospel would, would be saturated across Myanmar. That the devil would have overplayed his hand and now even more souls are going to be saved than had he never attacked the country. So we pray this over Myanmar, Lord. We ask you that you would judge this, the strong man that's destroying the nation. You, that you would judge. We're not judging. You are the judge, Lord. That you would judge the evil in Myanmar. And, and expose the corruption in Jesus name and you would come as a mighty warrior and save Myanmar save the nation let it have one more chance, like Samson, one more chance to destroy the, the, the Philistines, destroy the demonic powers in that nation. Lord, Lord we, we just repent of any idol worship in that nation that's gone on before. I do worship or worshiping other gods, other deities, other, fa other false gods. We repent of that, Father. In the name of Jesus, because you are the only true God. That, 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 that we worship. In the name of Jesus, because you are the only true God that, 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 that we worship. You're the only true God. And we pray, Lord, that the remnant, the really fired up Christians in Myanmar, the ones that know their God, they have no fear, that you would protect them, use them, and, and, and send them to places. A protection where in the night they'll get a dream go here and they'll go and then the next day they realize wow that saved my life and then they'll save that family like in the book of acts paul went here he went there the apostles went here and there sometimes running from the the, the persecutors and at other times where they ran to revival would break out and sometimes that town would get persecute them and then they would go to the next town. But I pray that in the midst of the shaking in Myanmar, a great harvest of souls, a revival. We pray you would open up the gates of glory where there's demonic portals of evil entities in the nation. There will be a gate and, and, and an altar of worship. <laughs> And praise going up in the name of Jesus. So I decree salvation over Myanmar. We decree revival. Harvest, protection, a shortening of the time of this control. We decree that those who are innocent that have been in prison will be released. Both in the church and in the secular and governmental realms, in the name of Jesus, and you would you would expose corruption and greed. To the whole world, and start to shift and overturn Myanmar, and bring it back to its rightful place. Bring the greatest harvest. Use this purification time for the church to make her white as snow. 
So the glory will be so bright on your people that, that there'll be no fear upon them. And you would visit them, Father. We, we bless the ministry also of Pastor, our Apostle, Sarah. In Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, as she's hosting this prayer, national prayer event, to pray for Myanmar. We pray for encouragement over your people, for joy of your people, that the glory and the joy would come together, that they would fear nothing, zero fear, but the presence of the glory would so surround them. That all fear would be gone, even the fear of death. Because the Bible says they love their not lives not even unto death that the fear of death will be so gone when the glory comes. As Paul and Silas were worshiping in the prison and the presence and power got so strong, they were rejoicing as if nothing was wrong. And the presence came so strong and an earthquake came and shook the place and the prisons broke open and they got back out, even with the prisoners. And even the jailer, who was about to kill himself because he knew he was in trouble if he lost all the prisoners. I pray for encounters like this in Myanmar that are on the level of the book of Acts. Incredible signs, incredible wonders, earth-shaking events that heaven and earth, even the earth itself groans for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Let your glory, let your power, let your presence invade Myanmar, right now we pray, Father. We thank you, Lord. And we bless the people watching. We love you guys so much. We're so far away in the, on the earth, but in the spirit, we're right there next to you. And we feel your pain. And we feel the burden and, and we love Myanmar and we, we pray one day God will send us there and, and the door will be open. I thank you, Father, for that nation that's an end time harvest nation. And that's produced incredible people like Sarah, like her brother, like the others there. I've seen your, your guys' heart. I've seen your faith. I see in Malaysia, so dedicated to the Lord, more than most places I've been in Asia, actually. I've been, we've been in many countries in Asia. The only other, maybe be... Uh, China underground church is very, very strong. It's similar to that. I've seen the believers there very on fire, and I see that with you guys in Malaysia. That are originally from Burma. You have such a passion and dedication to the Lord. And I think that's why God's going to use you greatly in, the last, in these last days. And think about this. If the devil is attacking your nation and you so hard because he's threatened by you, he's threatened by what could be, what, the harvest of souls that could be. Even China, when he saw the Chinese church, 
ဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီ